Greetings viewers. I've got my QPCR shirt on today for the recognition of the new lockdowns that they're doing for COVID in my area. Oh, those guys are reading the PCR at 40 cycles, so they're getting false positives. <sighs> All right. This is a different video here. I was trying to figure out how to relay uh, basically a public service announcement to you, some very important information that we discovered sort of serendipitously over at my pay channel. So the important thing, if you are a subscriber to the pay channel or plan on being one this weekend, you do not want to watch this video yet. You want to go and watch the video series. It's a three-part series on a Cadillac SRX that isn't running very well. You're going to want to go to that video first, and then if you want to, you can come back to this video. But in that three-part series, this, this catalog runs me for a bunch of loops, and I'm doing everything to try to find out what's wrong. And uh, it turns out that uh, it's going to be what I'm going to talk about in this video for you guys who I just think the information is really important. So this is your last chance. If you don't want to have the sort of suspense ruined following along the mystery you want to turn off now go over to the pay channel that video series is up there for you the three-part series so last chance okay in that video the first thing that i suspected and eliminated was an ignition problem but what i discovered in that video is that again I've got another test that I have always relied on for the last seven years that I've been doing this, and uh, that test turns out to be unreliable. It can give a false negative reading, and that test is the one you've seen me do a number of times before, where I look for the spark to jump from the spark plug wire or directly from the coil on plug to my test light, and looking at the gap that the spark jumps and basically by comparing that gap with other coils, if a coil has less of a jump, less of, it needs a shorter gap to complete the spark, then I usually call that coil bad. And I know if you guys have followed the channel long enough, you've seen me do this a number of times, and we may find a coil where it has really weak spark, the gap isn't as much, so we then move that coil to another location just to make sure it's not a wiring issue, and if again we get the weak spark from that coil, we call a bad coil. In this video, I do that test and I find that every single coil is giving the same amount of spark, and it is a full healthy spark with like a two inch jump and every coil read exactly the same however one of those coils was bad and we confirmed this through a scope test that I kind of discovered by accident that the coil was only putting out almost half as many kilovolts on the firing line as all the other coils in the car even though the gap that it was able to jump the air gap was the same as other coils. And um, I've never seen that happen before, but that absolutely happened in the video. So let me give you an example here. We're going to go ahead and look over at the video from the pay channel and just get a couple of seconds of excerpts from the video series to show you this. Okay, and as I hope you're aware by now, we've done major updates. You can get PayPal available now. We've upgraded the security and the platform for the website itself and um, just totally different experience than if you've been on even three weeks ago. If you were even on three weeks ago, totally different experience. It looks like part three has not uploaded yet, but that should be done by the time you guys see this video. The new plugins now have given me the ability to make descriptions of the videos, and I'm gonna put some keywords so that as we've built the video list up, we're gonna have some searchability, much better searchability if you're looking to find a video on a specific issue. But uh, let me find this area here. The videos play much faster and crisper. All right, this is the area I wanted to show you. This is going to be the bad coil. And what we're looking at is the amplitude of the firing line. This is a good coil. Look at the amplitude of your firing line. Bad coil and good coil. And again, those two coils that you saw there, red with the ignition scope, gave exactly the same spark jump to my test light on that 
air gap tests that I've been doing for like seven years now on this channel. And uh, basically what I'm saying is that that air gap test is not a valid test. It can give a false negative, but I don't think it'll give a false positive. So if you have a coil that you test with that air gap test with your test light, and it has much less of a gap than all the other coils in the car, you can almost guarantee that coil is bad. I've never seen to the contradictory on that. However, if it tests the same as all the other coils in the car, you cannot say that that or any other coil is good. Um, that is what we found in this video, and that is a profound found change in the way that I'm going to be doing things because I can no longer dismiss coils as not being an issue just because they pass that air gap test. This is the first time I've ever seen this happen, but again, I don't have nearly that experience that I see this all the time. There have been some of you guys out there, some viewers have told me in previous videos that that air gap test is not reliable for this reason. And quite honestly, I was kind of dismissive of it because I've never seen this happen before. So I owe an apology to you guys. Uh, you are right. Uh, some of you guys who do know how to use the scope and have done this and seen this before, you have pointed this out to me in the past. And um, yeah, I, I really disregarded that, but you guys are absolutely 100% correct. The air gap test is not 100% reliable. So I just wanted to bring that to your guys' attention, and certainly in the future when I do ignition tests, I'm going to be referring back to this, that uh, if I test a coil and I see that the air gap is equal on all the coils, I'm not going to immediately dismiss ignition as the issue. And um, quite honestly, I am going to have to say that uh, I don't see how you would have detected this problem without a scope. Um, so all the more validation if you guys are on the fence about getting a scope. Uh, this is at least the third diagnostic now that I have shown where you have to have a scope in order to do it. There is no other way. And, and this is one of those. But uh, it definitely threw me a curve using my traditional kind of more you know, home mechanic methods, and uh, the scope is what saved my butt on this uh, from changing parts unnecessarily. So just wanted to bring that to your attention, and if you're interested in seeing the full video, you can check out schrodingersboxqm.com, and you can see the series in full and uh, see how this would throw anybody for a loop if you didn't know how to use the ignition scope. So uh, pretty, pretty good series there. Thanks for watching. I hope this helps you. And um, yeah, now I got to wonder about how many other tests I can't trust. But uh, we got compression test and we got this ignition air gap jump test. Uh, I'm sure we're going to discover others as we move along. Unbelievable. All right. Take care, guys. We'll talk to you later.